Hello. Hello, are you well? Yeah. Wonderful. This is my voice, this is actually happening, don't worry. <laughs> I know I sound slightly ludicrous. Um, I'm not a homosexual. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for laughing at that. <laughs> Any gays in? There's a few. Kill them! No, no. <laughs> You're not gay in that shirt, honestly. <laughs> no, I'm bisexual, which means you're all at risk. Um, <laughs> we'll start with you and work round, that's what we're gonna do. Um, no, as you can tell, I'm an absolute lad. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's just backstage having a lager and punching a woman. I don't know, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing to cheer, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what I came for, punching women gags. Um, no, I'm not very laddy at all. I did something very unladdy recently in Birmingham. I'm from Birmingham. You'd never tell, would you? <laughs> I never had the accent. I was born better, but I... <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking, I'm joking. Now, I'm gonna... No, I, do, I love it. I do love the accent when I hear it. I was in Starbucks in Birmingham recently, because I'm earning, and these two... <laughs> These two women were having a conversation with the thickest sort of black country accents, and the one said to the other, she said, you're still going to tag the kids to the Middle East? And the other one said, yeah, I'm going to tag the Babai to Abu Dhabi. Right. <laughs> I, I had to leave Starbucks, I was in so much pain laughing. <laughs> no, I did, so, I did, this is really unladdy. I was in the Touchwood Shopping Centre, which I think is the gayest name for a shopping centre, isn't it? <laughs> you you know, a lovely time there. Uh, <laughs> These two sort of roughly 14-year-old lads tried to mug me. They came up to me and they went, give us your wallet. And I went, no. <laughs> and then farted out of nervousness, because <laughs> I was so terrified, absolutely terrified. I was like, what are you going to do if I don't give you my wallet? And they're like, oh, we're going to headbutt you. They'd be lucky, because they're about this high. <laughs> Also, the headbutt is the worst threat ever, isn't it? Because, sure, hit somebody in the head. That is a weak point. What are you going to hit them with? My head. <laughs> That's like hitting some of the balls with your balls, isn't it? <laughs> we might do that later, who knows? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know where I got the confidence from, but I just went, I've got a knife. <laughs> I, I sort of did, because I'd just been to Lakeland, so I did. <laughs> It wasn't a knife, it was a pizza wheel, so... <laughs> I didn't stab them, I cut them into eight neat slices. It was fine. <laughs> I mentioned farting there, I'm good at farting. That's a masculine thing, isn't it? Are you good at farting, sir? No. What's the longest one you've ever done? <laughs> Do you know, I haven't timed it. Mine's 14 seconds. <laughs> which I think might be a medical emergency, I'm not sure. <laughs> Somebody asked me, how did I know it was 14 seconds? Genuinely, it was because I was watching Countdown at the time. That's... <laughs> I do, I'm not laddie, but I have a sort of naughty side, and I call it walrus. And that's because my spirit animal is a walrus. Don't worry, I don't believe in any of this nonsense before I move on. I don't believe in, like, ghosts or any of that. I hate when people say they believe in ghosts, because they always say things like, I saw a ghost at the end of my bed. It's always in a conveniently creepy place, isn't it? Isn't it? No one ever goes, I saw a ghost in Morrison's. I just doesn't happen. <laughs> but I was at this house party, and there was this spirit healer there called Janet, and... She was so smug, she had a face on her, she looked like she was constantly pissing into a hot tub and getting away with it, you know. Like... <laughs> so smug. Which is like, I can tell you what your spirit animal is, Joe. It's a walrus. Well, what do I do with this information, Janet? <laughs> this is useless. And she said, walrus will talk to you and tell you to do things, and you should listen to that inner voice, to that inner walrus. I shouldn't listen to my inner voice, because it is normally things like, kick that toddler, just a stream <laughs> of unacceptable things. But she kept saying, listen to the voice, and then she said, I do normally charge for this service. It is normally £30, but as we're at a party, I do it for half price, I do it for £15. I was like, 
Walla says you can piss off. <laughs> but um, the next day I found this walrus ring online by chance, after searching four hours for one. <laughs> and since I've been wearing it, friends of mine think that it has changed me. They think that I go into myself at social occasions and it's me going, what did you say, walrus? <laughs> could you possibly kill another prostitute? You know, silly things. <laughs> But I, I've noticed that Walrus comes out with real jobs worths. I don't know if you have this in London. In Birmingham, we have an app where you can pay for parking on the app and you don't have to buy a ticket. I tried it for the first time. You put a location code in, put the code in, went into a nearby coffee shop, had just got my coffee, and a parking enforcement officer was next to my car. That's what they call themselves, with his little computer with a pen on a string in case I drop it, dickhead. <laughs> putting my details in. So I went out to him, I said, I've paid for parking. Look, I've got a receipt on my phone. It was eight minutes ago. And he looked at it and he went, no, this location code is for Leeds. And I said, well, I've clearly just made a mistake, haven't I? And he went, well, I don't know that, do I? I was like, yes, you do. <laughs> because if I'm lying, then what you're suggesting I've done is parked in Leeds <laughs> and then driven 120 miles in eight minutes. That's what you're suggesting I've done. <laughs> I've put it into the computer now. You'll have to complain at the office. It's only five minutes down the road. It's actually, it's about three seconds in my hypercar. <laughs> Got to the office, met Sweaty Sharon. Oh, my God. It was, it was so hot in that office. She looked like a bit of wet scrambled egg in a chair, just... <laughs> so annoyed with life. And she had a thick Brummie accent as well. She was talking to somebody in the back office when I went in. She was going, is that Yao making me a cup of tea, Steve? And then she looked at me and went, the day I hear Steve making me a cup of tea is the day I hear a rocking horse do a plop. <laughs> That's the weirdest imagery I've ever heard <laughs> for a start. And I explained the situation to her, gave her the phone and everything. And she looked at the phone, looked at her computer, back at the phone, and she went, this says loops. <laughs> I know, Sharon, I put the wrong code in. Well, you'll have to complain at the Leeds office. I've not been in Leeds, Sharon. She looks again and she's like, but how did you get here so quickly? <laughs> you would have had to break the speed limit. I would have had to break the speed of sound, Sharon. <laughs> so annoyed, so annoyed. I said, is there anyone else I can talk to about this? She said, you could speak to Steve over there. I decided not to speak to Steve for a number of reasons. The main one being, he was trying to eat a yoghurt with a pen lid. I just didn't feel <laughs> like he was competent. You get a sense sometimes, don't you? So in the end, I just had to leave, kept the fine, paid it. Still got it to this day. And after I'd left, Walrus was like, you idiot. You could have done anything in there. You could have killed her. <laughs> the perfect alibi. Where were you when the murder happened? <laughs> I was in Leeds. Um, I do it in shops as well. I went to Subway um, recently, Subway Sandwiches. Their slogan up until recently was, where winners eat. You only need to look at the people in Subway. <laughs> They have quite a fluid definition of the word winner, don't they? <laughs> Most of the people in there can't win custody of their own kids, so I don't know what they're winning. <laughs> I have some Subway fans and I can feel it. <laughs> I, I ordered a salad and a bottle of water, and I got to the till, and the girl said, oh, there's a deal on. If you get a cookie with this, the whole thing is cheaper than if you didn't have the cookie. And I said, well, I don't want a cookie because I'm trying to be healthy, hence why I'm having a salad. So can I not have the cookie but still have the deal? And she went, no, you have to have the cookie. <laughs> Otherwise, when I count the cookies later, there'll be a discrepancy. <laughs> That's a big word. <laughs> I don't want this cookie. What am I going to do with this cookie? And she said, why don't you give it to somebody in the street? <laughs> Who does that do on the cookie? Like, you mental? <laughs> I said, I don't want this cookie. I said, do you want the cookie? And she went, Oh, are you sure? <laughs> I've never been more sure of anything in my life. Have the cookie. She's like, what sort of cookie would you like? What sort of cookie would you like? <laughs> so, I can't decide, you have to decide for me. So I was now trying to guess, I was looking at the cookies, I said, do you like white chocolate chips? And she went, 
No, I don't like white chocolate chips. <laughs> Do you like M&M's? And she went, oh yeah, I quite like M&M's. So I said, I'll have an M&M cookie, please. And she went, oh, good choice. <laughs> and then she tried to give it to me. I was like, why are you giving it to me? <laughs> it's yours. And she's like, oh, you have to give it back to me as a gift. That's the law. That's not a law. <laughs> and I got the cookie and I paid for it and I held it in my hand. And Walrus looked up at me. She's wasted your time here. <laughs> so I ate the cookie in front of her. <laughs> it's in one go. Ah! I checked the receipt when I got to the door as well. It's 50p more. So I went back to her and said, why is it 50p more? And she went, oh, the M&M cookie isn't part of that deal. <laughs> Right, this is one I did. Um, this is beautifully simple. You can do this as well. I'm so proud of this. I went into Emporio Armani with a Greg sausage roll. Watch the panic. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> we all know the Greg sausage roll is one part pork to 99 parts pastry dust, isn't it? <laughs> and the woman came up to me. First thing she said to us, don't make any sudden movements. <laughs> it's a pasty, not a bomb. I said, I'll eat it when I leave. She said, no, you must leave immediately. The smell will get into the fabric. Smell doesn't transfer that quickly. Otherwise, all of the clothes in Primark would smell of broken dreams, wouldn't they? So... <laughs> I said, I just want to look at the shirts. And she said, well, I'll look after that. So now my sausage roll had a legal guardian. <laughs> Put it in a creche with some steak bakes, I imagine. And I was walking around looking at the shirts, and she really hated me. She had such a foul face on her. Do you know doesn't... <laughs> I found a shirt that I liked, and I took it to the counter, and she said, are you going to buy that? And I said, yes. And she said, well, before I forget. And she got the sausage roll off the side, but because she was angry, she did it too quickly, and it spun out of the bag, literally spun, pissing flakes everywhere. <laughs> Like a boomerang with psoriasis, which is all, <laughs> all over the shirt, all over me. She made a noise that was unusually low. She went, <laughs> I was in shock. Sort of looked down at the shirt, brushed the flakes off, inspected it, and I just went, the smell has got into the fabric and stormed out. <laughs> this has been a dream come true. I've been Jay Lassie. Thank you so much. <laughs> 